It is Wednesday, the 28th of August. I'm your host, Brian Kier, and this is the Quantum Cast. So, as I sit here with one eye open, we are going to have a quick scroll through our focus stocks for the day. We've got Petrofac Limited, we have Gulf Keystone Petroleum, and finally, another installment of Argo Blockchain. <laughs> Okay, so beginning with Petrofat Group, this company is a self-proclaimed leading international service provider to the oil and gas industry, and also, more specifically, the production and processing industry. So Petrofac has just announced its results for the six months ended the 30th of June 2019 and this company has a market cap of around 1.4 billion pounds. Google says they have a PE of around 26.87 but uh, we'll be able to confirm that in the results. They've mentioned that they've had a reported net profit of about 139 million dollars and if we look a little bit further back this net profit is one that should be taken positively because they had made a net loss of around 15 in fact sorry 17 million dollars in 2018 once again this net profit was reportedly 139 million dollars which was impressive the company had net cash of around 69 million dollars at the 30th of June 2019 but on the 31st of December 2018 they had around 90 million dollars in cash so they have decreased this amount by about 21 million but once again working capital flows with this kind of business is quite seasonal you can't just assume that they're going to make the same profit in each half but for the sake of an argument if we do use that the company has a PE of around seven, eight, nine, ten. Depends where your conservative measurement is or whether you're being quite lenient on the measurements. It's relatively average for the industry, but uh, it is towards the cheaper end. We can look at the 52 week highs of the company, 678 pence per share, and 52 week lows are around 373 pence per share. This company has been in a downtrend for a while uh, and it had made significant lows around the 11th of February 2019 and recovered to about 520 pence per share before falling back to just under 400 pence per share. And in the past five days, if we have a brief look, the shares have been a bit of a chop, range bound 395 all the way to about 407 pence per share in a month, highs of 420, lows of 487. Um, nothing specific to look at there, but we must remember that this company has had a lot of issues in the past with the regulators. I believe there was a, an oil company, all that you now oil, and the CEO Ayman Afsari of Syrian origin, I believe had been involved in a couple of cases and I'm not actually sure whether they've all been sorted out yet but uh, that was one of the main reasons as to why the company shares have been battered over the past few years in fact if I go all the way back to the 17th of March 2017 sorry the 31st actually we could see that was the beginning of the shares crushing all the way down to around 350 pence per share. I believe they even spiked lower on that day, but they had recovered quite a bit afterwards. Good trade for those who were in, obviously after the crash, but uh, not so great for long-term shareholders. If we dig deeper into the report, we can see that they've got about $2.6 billion of revenue secured for the six months ahead. So seems that their revenue will be at least around where they expect it to be. So in this case, we'll probably just rely on the profit forecast to be relatively equal 
to how they've done at this point in the year. Obviously though, costs can be spread out, so this shouldn't be used as a really solid measurement. But they have said, speaking of solid, <laughs> they've uh, delivered these solid results and they've got a boost in new order intake and they've been reducing costs. It seems this company's made a bit of progress from its uh, days of difficulty over the past two or three years. They even announced an interim dividend of 12.7 US cents per share, which is about 10 pence per share. So that gives them a yield for the half year, I believe, of two and a half percent. Impressive stuff. I wonder what their whole year dividend would be the full year dividend in fact they've mentioned that they made a business performance net profit of 154 million pounds so their underlying margins seem to have improved as I can see from here and then there's just a couple of little details like revenue up 2% uh, that's nothing special um, then we could look at individual areas. In fact, that's engineering and construction that I talked about. Engineering and production revenues are up 4%. Integrated energy services revenues are down 27%. So that seems to be an area of slow growth. Um, and I would be worried with that particular area, their integrated energy services area. Although it does represent a really small proportion of their total revenue and profits. Their net profit there is down 56% to $7 million, but their revenue is only about $100 million. That is down about 27%. So it's not great, but uh, what has been mentioned here is they've had higher average realized prices of barrels of oil. So I assume it's just the company not being able to market their products or secure enough deals. But nevertheless, they remain well positioned for the remainder of the year to actually meet their expectations, which is nice to see. And they're trying to get a couple of contracts. They mentioned there's a busy tendering type pipeline of around $13 billion. And in fact, if I look down, I can see with the SFO investigation, which we mentioned earlier, no charges have been brought against Petrofac or any officers or current employees, only former employees so far. And they are hoping to bring this matter to a close quickly. When that gets sorted out, usually you see the share prices rally. But at the moment, we can't really see any updates because the company is just trying to reassure shareholders there is no certainty that things will sort out. But hey, with that company, I think uh, that's enough information that we can go off. But now we're going to move on to Gulf Keystone Petroleum. This company's ticker symbol is GKP. So they have released an RNS today saying that they've got a Shikan payment update. One of their assets, obviously, they've received quite a bit of funds from. And they've confirmed that they've released a gross payment of around $25.6 million, meaning that that's $20 million net to GKP. In terms of pounds, that's all right for the company. That's uh, around 18 million pounds, which is decent. The company's market cap seems to be standing strong at around 500 million pounds. They've got quite a high PE ratio. Google gives them a PE ratio of about eight and a half, which is above their peers at the moment. I mean, we've mentioned Premier recently. Premier's around three to four and is slowly decreasing. You've also got Enquest, which is heavily discounted relative to its earnings. And I could name a couple more, Tullow's one. Tullow had a PE of around six to seven, which isn't that much of a discount. I think Enquest is around three, uh, so. If you are bullish in the area, there's probably less risk with companies like Enquist, Tullow and Premier, as opposed to Gulf Keystone Petroleum, which is operating in an area that has quite a bit of geopolitical risk. The Kurdish region 
of sorry the Kurdistan region of Iraq. But one thing that the company has been doing well for shareholders is they've been buying back shares. And when you buy back shares, you're telling your shareholders that you have confidence in the product that you are giving to them or the investment product out there, which are shares in Gulf Keystone Petroleum. So this is pretty much a normal RNS, but I would be interested to have a quick look at the 52 week highs of the share because oil prices are about $60 a barrel right now, just under $60. Last night when I checked, they were Brent oil or Brent crude oil was at 59 spot five zero. Then it had just recovered a little bit from some uh, positive news on the American Petroleum Institute inventory report data that was released at 9.30 p.m. our time, GMT, but it's usually released in the US. So we noted after looking yesterday, and I posted on Twitter, that there are actually a significant draw occurring. And that was around 11 million barrels, much better than expected. I wonder how this will uh, be shown in the Energy Information Administration data that will come later today, I believe. And that could balance things out, or there could be somewhat of a parity, we'll have to see. But uh, nevertheless, GKP's shares had a 52 week high back when oil prices were around $70 a barrel at 303 spot five pence per share. They had a 52 week low of 164 spot seven five pence per share. And that low was caused by oil prices being around $55 a barrel. As you can probably assume, oil prices have been very volatile throughout the past 52 weeks. In fact, the main reason was the correction back in December 2018. That was when they almost bottomed. In fact, November, December kind of period then could see that oil prices were suffering. Most asset classes were being sold off, but straight after December 2018, when the new year began, oil prices recovered, asset prices recovered, a lot of things that are correlated with just global equity markets and rely on growth eventually rallied in the months following. Moving on to our final company for the day, Argo Blockchain. We've mentioned this company before, but they have just hit an RNS saying that their new mining hardware delivers faster than expected returns on investment. And they've also mentioned the grant of share options, so a reward to their directors, and also a dealing notification. I believe the dealing notification is uh, either a major shareholder buying or selling shares. And we'll have a look at that later, but for now we'll look at their talk about the mining investment hardware. They've mentioned that they've had better than expected returns. These machines have already achieved 100% payback on their investment. And these particular machines are called the Bitmain Z11 Antminer machines. These are the more expensive Antminer machines that they were talking about a while back. They had the S17 Antminer machines that they were buying much more of, but uh, they actually were paying around, I calculated it on Twitter a while back, around 1,500 pounds a pop, and they're buying 2,267 of those. And the Bitmain Z11 Antminer machines which they mentioned were ordered in April 2019 and went into production in 2019 May uh, are about £3,500 a pop. So they spent about three and a half million trying to get those thousand uh, machines. And it's interesting that they mentioned that they have recouped their full cost in under half the time that the company had estimated. This is really impressive. They've also mentioned that Argo is well ahead of schedule to recoup the cost of the other machines, the 2,267 S17 Antminer machines. And that's about a really impressive gigahash rate. Goodness me. Purchased in April 
and May of 2019, and they've been in production since May and June. It hasn't been that long, so it's really impressive. It seems that uh, they are impressed as well, management. In fact, Mike Edwards, the executive chairman of Argo, mentioned that uh, their decision to move fast with a major expansion of mining infrastructure is reaping strong returns much earlier than expected. And he mentions that he is confident with this strategy and that it will continue to pay off in the long term. In addition to this, the company has mentioned that uh, Matthew Shaw, who was appointed as a non-executive director and he's also supposedly independent on the 17th of July 2019 they've granted him stock options of around 1 million ordinary shares at an exercise price of 16 pence per share and it says that they will vest after 12 months from the date of his appointment and 136 of the options will vest each month thereafter so at the moment we assume that over the next 12 months this director has an incentive to boost the shares above 16 pence so he can get his free shares further assets eh? worst case scenario if he doesn't sell them he's got a bit of money to make himself and just holding them assume they go into a dividend or something like that um, there's also an option with uh, another director John Jonathan Bixby I believe a former director of the company to extend the exercise period to about 5.9 million shares granted but uh, those were granted to him in July 2018 they've already been vested and they are also exercisable at a price of 16 pence per ordinary share one other thing we can also talk about is that the company has mentioned that there is going to be a share transfer they received notification from Durban Holdings Limited of a transfer of 19.35 million ordinary shares to Toro Consulting Limited. And this company is one which Jonathan Bixby, a former director, is interested in. So we haven't had a seller. One party was looking to sell these shares, not the entirety of their shareholding. Durban Holding, after selling 19.35 million shares, will then have 21.6 million shares remaining. That equates to about 7.35% of the outstanding shares of the company, Argo Blockchain. But uh, Toro Consulting will be buying around 10 million of those shares. This share transfer uh, mentioned that there, it was also a sale to a third party. So there haven't been shares dumped on the open market, more so a gentleman's agreement or in fact more so a formal agreement where uh, a couple of parties have switched over their shareholdings for I assume an undisclosed amount maybe a little bit of a discounted price they haven't mentioned here actually which is unfortunate they said it happened about two days ago and I, I assume Durban what was the name Durban Holdings Limited had about 14% of the total shares so they were very exposed to the performance of this company I assume they're trying to take a couple of their profits now but uh, we can't really assume what is the reason for them getting out of this situation I, I would have assumed Durban was linked to Mike Edwards I think it is in fact yes it is the CEO of the current company has transferred these shares over so I assume he has done this from his own shareholding this is quite odd but um, Mr. Edwards or Mike Edwards the CEO of Argo blockchain has transferred shares from his holdings company Durban Holdings Limited to a previous director in the company's holdings company which is Toro Consulting Limited I assume there were costs owed but uh, that actually means that there isn't an institutional seller but more so an individual or a group of individuals sorting out something that may have needed to be sorted out in the past so this isn't really that bad of a 
news release. It's nothing special in my opinion, except for the better than expected results from the mining infrastructure. That is actually really impressive. And looking at the shares, goodness me, they've been doing really well. 9.75 pence per share currently with 52 week highs of around 11.75 pence per share, 52 week lows of 2.55. So, wow, the company has been doing really well. In 2018 though, they had been at around 12.5 pence per share, but I believe that they're gonna make all time highs soon if this momentum carries on. They're approaching quite an interesting level of resistance. on The chart recently, we will potentially look at this. There isn't any intention to look at it today though, but over the weekend, if we have some time, we hope to include this company. In fact, I'll write them down here for the sake of those interested in the chart. But uh, the company is valued at 28 million pounds. They're generating about 1.5 million pounds a month in uh, free cash flow. They have quite a decent margin of 80%. So, goodness me, they'll have a P of under two. I mean, there must be some hidden costs, but for now, I think this company is really interesting. I keep reading into them and a lot of people over on Twitter are quite hype of it. I'm not really a fan of cryptocurrency myself, but I do have a bit of history in it. So I guess understanding this company's business model is a little bit easier to explain the, the minor models how expensive they are. The only worry I have is a lot of the infrastructure gets old and you can't just give it maintenance like you can with say repairing computers over here, but uh, you actually have to get the latest equipment. So when you spend three million on infrastructure within say, I don't know, three to four months or even 12 months, it depends what the situation around is like. It depends how many people are mining, uh, what the best optimal giga hash rate is something we could use basically it's like a internet speed almost but mining speed is what's important in this case a lot of variables are important to be measured and i would say this company would have to continuously replace its equipment say they spent three odd million on the i believe z11 ant miners they'd have to spend it again and again and again with basically no value remaining because that makes the equipment bits of metal unless they scrap it, maybe they scrap it, they still won't get much value. But say with computers usually, you can scrap them for like a tenth of the price um, or at least sell them on for a tenth of the price. Scrap them probably for much less actually. But with these bits of equipment, you pay thousands for them and they're basically worthless when the job is done and a new bit of equipment comes out. But anyways, that wraps up today's episode of the Quantum Cast. I've been your host, Ryan Kier, but before I go, be sure to check out our chart updates or our technical analysis updates as we've labeled them on our site, on Facebook and Wells Fargo, a couple of US stock charts right there. And uh, we have quite an interesting look in fact, at a wedge forming on Wells Fargo, and it has quite a bit of detail to it. But anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Until next time.